This video is brought to you by Make It Simple TT, the premier online learning space for CXE IT and computer science classes in the Caribbean. All our classes are run on the familiar and secure Google Classroom platform. The weekly videos are well laid out and labeled by topic, dated, and placed in reverse chronological order to ensure easy access even if you miss a class. To register, head over to our website at makeitsimplett.com forward slash register, or you can WhatsApp one 308 8799 We are working on algorithms, and I'm going to take it from the start, like start, 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 the basics of the basics. So let's go. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll explain to y'all what is algorithm, right? Algorithm is called a formal sequence sequence of instructions. Now, this formal sequence of instructions, it means that you are giving instructions to somebody or something. And in this case, we are giving instructions to a computer. So before we even go into algorithms, I have to explain to you a basic concept that real people to really grasp right so let me get this basic concept for y'all so that you can understand what, what i'm trying to say so algorithm is a set of instructions that um solves our problem the problem is there are problems in the world and we need computers to solve them in order for the computers to solve the problem we have to tell them what to do now here's where you have to start off understanding you have to understand that the computer is the middleman in this whole thing so this is my this is our computer here so this is the computer and this is in my view called the dumb machine as much as you want to talk about computers being smart and ai and technology and all that kind of cool stuff a computer is a dumb machine and literally what the computer is going to do is the computer is going to follow instructions now in following instructions the computer is trying its best to um to follow the instructions properly but it really work out too well because we need to give the instructions properly. So think of the computer as a dumb machine, like a, a three-year-old, right? Now, a three-year-old is not dumb. It has the ability to follow, the, the three-year-old three -year -old child will have the ability to follow instructions. But the instructions that you have to give a three-year-old have to be very, 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 very clear. Whereas the three-year-old will do dumb stuff. So if you say, okay, you tell the child, go to the fridge and get me water and they come back with the water in their hand. Will you blame the child? No, because the child literally did what you asked, which is bring water and you didn't specify how. So there are three people that, that are part of this algorithm process, this computer process, right? Right, um, right. so what we're saying is this algorithm process, this algorithm process requires the dumb machine to do something for somebody on this side. The person on this side here is called the user. The user is the one that is going to look at this dumb machine and, and try to do things. So the user is going to ask the dumb machine to do something, hope the dumb machine could give back a response, and then send back a next thing to the dumb machine and hope the dumb machine could give a response. But the problem is, this is a dumb machine. The dumb machine is like, not smart. It can't do the things that you want it to do. It can't write a program by itself. So the user and the dumb machine have to interact, but there must be a person on this side. And the person on this side is called the smart person. Smart person, AKA programmer. So the programmer is going to give instructions. And the programmer will give these instructions to the, um, to the dumb machine. And then the dumb machine is going to follow it. And that is what we call an algorithm. So the programmer sends these instructions to the dumb machine. Now the list of instructions that go to the dumb machine have to be very clear. So it has to be like a line to say do this, then a line to say do that, then a next line, then a next line, then a next line. And then the dumb machine will translate these lines into something that will be able to allow the user to get the information. So think of it this way. Imagine you are telling a child how to serve people at a restaurant. You are the smart person. The programmer the dumb machine is the child the three-year-old child and you have to give very specific instructions to say child take this bowl with this and carry it to table number seven put it on top of the table and then come back take this plate with this sandwich and carry it to table number 13 carry it to the table 
put it on top and then come back and every instruction that you give you are basically making sure that the three-year-old can't mess it up and that's the whole point of algorithms you are given an instruction that the computer cannot mess up that's your goal you're trying to make it as clear as possible so that when the user comes to use it the user doesn't come and be like uh what i don't understand what is happening here you don't want the user to be like that's not a user right yeah you don't want the user to be like oh this i don't know how to use this program if a user cannot use the program you can't blame the computer the computer is not the issue if the user cannot use the program really and truly is a smart person didn't make it, didn't give the instructions in such a way so that the user will be able to use it properly. And that's the foundation. That sets you up now to understand that everything that you write when you do an algorithm is an instruction that a computer has to follow. And if you have to get the computer to follow the instruction, you have to make sure that it is clear. So let's see what um, an algorithm is. So in order for an algorithm to make sense, because remember, there is the dumb machine in the middle and you have to give the information to the dumb machine as simply as possible. So in order for it, for it to make sense, you need to make sure that the steps are fall, um, that fall under the following character, um, characteristics, right? It must be finite. The steps must have an end. So that's like me telling you, go to the dot, 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 dot. Go to the where, go to the who, I don't know. What, 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 what was the statement? Imagine you tell the three-year-old child that. Go to the... The child will be like, um, the where. Where is the... That means your step is not finite. It doesn't have an end. It doesn't have a clarity of what is supposed to happen. Right? Um... The next thing would be precise. <clears throat> The steps must be precise. Exactly what you want to be done should be said. So if I say go to the, I I haven't been precise. So I could say go to the table seven number seventeen. That now will clearly say what table I'm going to and what number the table is. So that's very precise. So that is an instruction that it must make sense. So that you are speaking to the dumb machine. And you have to tell the dumb machine exactly what to do. Next one is unambiguous. No unnecessary information should be missing. So unambiguous, if I say, go to table 17 and put the plate on the table. That now takes away the ambiguity, meaning it must be unambiguous. Unambiguous is basically saying, I want to make sure that you can't mess this up, right? The whole goal is, if I give you the instructions, computer, you're not supposed to mess it up, right? Let's go again. It must flow. So that's good, it has to flow. If the instructions don't flow and I say, okay, um, Go to table, then get the food, and then put it on table. I have a problem because I should say, I should say, get the food should be first, then I should go to the table, and then I should put it on the table. So it doesn't flow. If it doesn't flow, we have a problem. Because the computer will be like, that not making sense to me. Because remember, imagine you're speaking to a three-year-old. Right? Termination. Termination means that the steps must terminate somewhere. Meaning there must be an end. So if I say, get the food, go to the table, put it on the table. There must be a final thing that says, come back. Here. Right? That is going to clearly say, all right, we are terminating right here, come back here. And then the last thing the algorithm must have, it must have an output. If there isn't an output or there isn't something that, that could prove that there was an input or process and an output, you didn't really do an algorithm. You just did, I don't know, you did, a, you did a something. So always remember, you are the smart person, aka the programmer. 
you are giving instructions to a dumb machine which is likened to a three-year-old and the user is the person that's interacting with this three-year-old but you have to make sure that the three-year-old is able to follow your instructions perfectly therefore you must make them as clear as finite as precise as unambiguous and have a proper flow it terminates and there must be an output and that's the concept of an algorithm that's why you actually write the list of instructions how do algorithms come about now remember when you are writing an algorithm you are speaking to a computer so what you are actually doing is you're doing something called i p and o you're doing input process and output now if you know how this diagram works there's an input there's a processor which is the cpu and then there's an output that you'll get so let's say the input is like a keyboard or something and you want to add the numbers okay your inputs are the numbers two and two the process will be addition And if the process of addition happens to two and two, your output should be four. Simple, right? That's how a computer should work. The thing is, the computer by itself doesn't know how to process. It has no idea how to do this part. You see the processing part? Computer don't know how to do it. The computer just, know how, just knows how to do the maths. But we have to tell it how to carry out the maths. Now, really and truly, the numbers two and two are, are binary numbers. They look like this, actually. And this is what translates that to, and this is what translates that to. Why? Because a computer just does maths. If you do really grasp that, that's okay. Just remember, all a computer does is maths. All the colorful things that you see, all the DLSS, all the gaming stuff, all the emojis, all the filters, all kind of things, all of those things translate down to numbers. And the numbers are one and zero. Every single thing. So what we do, is we are actually taking these grouped num numbers of ones and zeros we converting them to inputs sending it into the processor the processor receives them as a bunch of ones and zeros and inside here some mystical thing called maths takes place and any maths takes place and we get an output that comes onto the screen and we might see a four or something that's all that really happens when we do when we do our when we do our program. But in order for this thing to take place, they had to create a way for us, the humans, to talk to the computer. So we were able to figure out, okay, let's write up a, a programming language that will take these ones and zeros and group them into commands. Right? That's the long and short of it. At the end of the whole series, I'll explain this in a lot more detail so that you'll understand how everything works. Right? But. When we do program design, the first thing that we have to do is we have to understand something. You have to define your problem. And let's say the problem is to find the sum of three numbers. So I want to, um, yeah, so let's say I want to tell this three-year-old or let me tell, I want to tell the computer to find the sum of three numbers. I have to give the computer the instructions in such a way that it's so clear that the computer can't get it wrong. You have to give instructions to somebody and you were very concerned that they would mess it up and you broke it down to the smallest 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 thing because not that the person kind of slow but that the person kind of slow and you had to like you know be very very detailed usually it happens with younger children when you're dealing with young children you have to be very very detailed and very clear or else they will mess it up there was a time i sent um a child to get um to bring what they had to bring from the fridge boy i think i asked for a bottle of water no yeah i think i asked for water and then there's a bottle of water in the fridge no there was a frozen bottle of water and then there was a normal bottle of water me thinking well the child should be smart enough to know not to bring the frozen bottle of water because i can't drink it the child bring the frozen bottle of water for me and watch me like here bring the water for you and i was like you still wait wait I am the stupid one because I didn't tell the child clearly to bring the unfrozen bottle of water and be like, I am the problem. I am the problem. So I was like, child, go in the fridge and bring the not frozen bottle of water. And he brought the bottle of water. Right? So we have to define the problem. The problem is clear. We have to find the sum of three numbers. So we want to find the sum of three numbers. Cool. There is something called a defining diagram. So we define it using something called an IPO. So here's how this works. A defining diagram is the genesis of figuring out how the program is going to work. 
you are literally going to determine what goes in, the process that takes place, and what comes out. So here's what we have to think about. We have to identify, okay, what do you want to get out of it? What do you want to put into it? And what process do you need to do to get it done? Now we put in it in the form of IP and right input, process, output. That's what we are doing. But I, I purposefully put it like this because everybody knows what they want to get out of something, but nobody knows how to do it, aka the process. It's like your life, you know? You know what you want to get out of life. You want to be successful. You want to be this. You want to be that. You want to like, you know, do all these cool stuff. But you really don't know the process that you have to go through. And you don't even know where you have to input into it. This video is brought to you by Make It Simple TT. In every CSEC IT class, assignments are given on a weekly basis covering the topic that was taught in the class. The assignments are original questions and test the entire syllabus and model the style of questions that come in past papers. Monthly reports are also sent to parents and guardians showing the progress of students. To register, head over to our website at makeitsimplett.com forward slash register or you can WhatsApp one 308 8799 Like to become a... Um, to have one of them bodies that those Instagram models have. Oh, that's a bad example because they do plastic surgery. Correct. Got you that. Anybody that watching this and you are an Instagram model and you did plastic surgery, I'm sorry. That's all I needed. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. Forgive me. I'm good, right? So the output that you want, you would need to know what you need to put in and any process I have to go through. AKA, like you know, you want to be successful, you have to put in hard work, you have to put in this and whatnot, and the process you have to go through is this. You want to get a one in IT, you watch my channel, thing, 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 yada, yada, yada. Right, good. So here's how our IP, our IP diagram will look like. Let's say I want to find you some of three numbers. I want to find you some of um, three numbers, the numbers are A, B, and C. You might ask yourself, why in the world are the numbers A, B, and C? Because if I want to find the sum of three numbers, I could just basically put in numbers three, nine, and six. Cool, no problem, you could do that. But remember, this is finding the sum of the numbers three, nine, and six. That's for you to do. Remember, you are the smart person. You are the smart person. You could find the sum of three, nine, and six if you want to know. That's okay, you could do that anytime. If you want the user to keep coming and bothering you to ask you how do you find the, uh, the, the sum of a certain set of numbers, that's your business. You can take your 24 hours answering questions from a user all the time. But instead of the user bothering you all the time, we can create a program and give a set of instructions to a computer and let the computer do the calculation for us so the user will ask the computer. Now when the user asks the computer, we could rock back and just watch the computer answer the questions for us because we have automated the process. That's the whole goal of writing our program. You are automating a process that will take very long. Like if you were to try to automate the program to manually do the switching of the pixels for a game, you will probably need all the humans in the world to make one game because each one of them will have to manually switch the billions of pixels. But when you write a program and you have an algorithm with a set of instructions, you could do that. So that now gives us the issue of, okay, if we don't want to just find 3, 9, and 6, uh, or 2, 4, and 8, or whatever, we, de we want to be able to find the sum of any three numbers. In order to find the sum of any three numbers, what you're going to have to do is, you're going to have to now create a way to tell the computer, aka the three-year-old, that under any circumstance, they'll be able to find the numbers. So the way you do this is you create some boxes, right? So you create box one, you create box two, you create box three, and then you create box four. You call the first box A, you call the second box B, you call the next box C, and you call the next box D. And you say to the computer, in our case, the three-year-old child, open the box and see what number the person has put in. So when we say input A, B, and C, we are asking the user, which is the person who uses in your program, to put any numbers. We not put any numbers for ourselves because we are the programmer. Because we are the programmer, we are giving instructions to a computer on how to do this. So we tell the computer, here's what, create a box A, B, and C and ask the user to put any numbers for you. 
let's say in this case the user put in 3, 9, and 6. So we'll end up getting in A, they'll put in a 3, in B, they'll put in a 9, and in C, they'll put in a 6. Cool. We dealt with the input part there, right? Those are the inputs that you need to find the sum of three numbers because you are defining how this thing is going to work. The second thing now is you have to tell the computer how to process it, aka how to do the maths. Because all a computer, all a computer does is maths. So you are making the computer classify the things as A, B, and C. Now, later on, I'll tell you that this is called variables, right? But just long enough for now, right? So, in the computer's mind, the processing now is, look inside A and see what you find. Inside A, we have a 3. Okay, cool. Look inside B and see what you find. Inside B, we have a 9. Look inside C and see what you find. We have a 6. But remember, the person not putting the 3, 9, and 6 is not you. Because you are the smart person. You are higher than just the numbers. You are worth more than the numbers. You are... Just now, huh? Yes, you are the person that is above all of this because you control how the computer actually works. And by controlling how the computer actually works, you are saying, computer, this is how you do it and I'm telling you how to do it and no questions asked, the computer will follow your instructions. So you create the A, the B and the C and you say, all right, cool. We create the A, the B and the C. And then the computer will know whatever is inside A, B and C, it will follow your rules and add them up. So 9 plus 6 is 15 and 3 is 18, yeah. So D now will become 18. And then you say, computer, whatever is inside D, I want you to output that and it'll be like, in D there is an 18. And that is the basis of algorithms. You have to know what is going in, what is the process that you're trying to do, and what you expect to get out. But you are telling the computer how to do it not what to do it on. The user is the one that's sending it. So let's go back to this little diagram here. The user will send in three for the first number, six for the second number, and nine for the third number. And the output that will come back to the user will be 18. How does the computer know how to do that? Because you, the smart one, gave the instructions on how to do it. So no matter what happens, if the computer decides, if the person decides, all right, let me run this program again. And instead of putting three, nine, and six, they send two, four, and eight. Doesn't matter. The computer is smart enough because it's going to follow your instructions and say, okay, what is A now? A is two, B is four, 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 that's what I meant to say, four, and C is eight. And I'll just add all of them up and then we'll get the 14. And then the output will be 14. And there, there you have it. You have solved the problem of finding three numbers. Remember, every single program that was ever written, the goal is to solve a problem that more than likely humans can't sit down and solve all the time. Because you're trying to get somebody to do the work for you and you are getting a computer to do the processing part of it. The user puts in the input and the user gets the output, but the instructions, the whole set of instructions are done by you. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody in the chat there have questions? Oh. Manek. Manek is it. Right, so you're feeling good there so far, you're saying to yourself, all right, I understand what you said so far, great, no problem. Right, so how we actually apply this thing in life is that when you give the computer um, a set of instructions, the instructions that you give could be a program for almost anything, which could be like, take a picture, apply a filter, all sorts of things. Once you can figure out the process that it has to go through, you win. Once you can figure out the process and you could give the computer the list of things to do, you're not really going to have a problem because the computer will follow your instructions to the best of its ability. So here's how we will look at this. This here is to calculate the price of something and the VAT. 
So if somebody inputs the price, whatever the price is, remember, we don't care what the price is, we care about the solution to what the price is, to what the thing is. So to calculate the VAT, I will say in Trinidad and Tobago, VAT is 12.5%, right? I'll multiply 12.5% by the price because remember, the whole processing thing, it's literally mathematics. Mathematics. Everything comes down to one and zero. This maths is logic. So if I multiply the 12.5 by the price, I'll get something called V. And then I could output that to the screen and the person will see whatever the VAT is. How what the VAT is will be dependent on the price that they put in. We don't need to know the price. We don't want to know the price because we are the smart people. We are the smart people on the other side that's giving the instructions on what to do. And we're just watching it work. We're watching it work. So it's like we're running this restaurant and we are smart enough. Well, it will be child labor if you have a three-year-old working in the restaurant. But long story short, we're sitting back, giving the instructions to this three-year-old child. And the three-year-old child is carrying out the instructions, coming back, carrying out the instructions, coming back. And every time it comes back, you're like, hey, work, it work. Yes, because you have given the proper process to the machine that is dumb, right? So after we calculate the VAT, we can now calculate something called discount. So we can take the discount and say T is equal to price plus VAT minus discount. So you take the price, add it to the VAT, and then minus the discount. T will be output to the user, and that'll be something called total. Total is what the user will see, and the user will be like, hey, I've calculated my total. It's literally what happens in a, um, in a restaurant or something. So where they calculate your VAT and service charge and all that stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. That's all. Right? So, that is it, you know? That is our defining diagram. Nothing about variables, nothing about constants, nothing about anything like that yet. This is just the, the basic foundational of everything. If you want, if you know about variables and constants, then that's good for you. But we'll get to variables and constants and all that stuff eh, next week. But that's the, that's the concept of our defining diagram. So if you want, you could go and try these questions and um, see if you can apply it to your life. And yeah. This video is brought to you by Make It Simple TT. Every class is structured to run on a yearly cycle from June to May. This cycle covers the whole syllabus in 12 months with one two-hour session per week, along with assignments that are given weekly. Every class is recorded so students can always go over the work and recap notes in case they miss a class. To register, head over to our website at makeitsimplett.com forward slash register or you can WhatsApp 1-868-308-8799. I don't know what to tell you again. Yeah, it should be okay. Next week, we will start on representing algorithms and I'll show you how to represent algorithm from start to finish. But that will define diagrams. Actually, let me do the answers for you. So you can watch this part here, pause the video, and then do it. So find the average of two numbers. We'll have input, process, output. The input that I'm going to be putting will be the two numbers, A and B. Remember, I'm not putting any actual number because the user is putting in the actual number. I am putting in the instructions for a computer to follow. So the two numbers I'll put in will be A and B. And the average of two numbers, I'll put A, V, E for average, is equal to A plus B divided by 2. Because remember, maths. That's what a computer cares about. Maths and logic. And then the output will be average. If you got that correct, well, you could put a comment in the chat. In the, um, not in the chat. You could mention it in the comments that you got it correct. For those of you watching after the fact. Yeah. Then next one, find the average time it takes you to get through traffic if there are four obstacles, create your own obstacles. Well, let's see the average time to get through traffic if there are four obstacles. So we'll put obstacle one, obstacle one, obstacle two, obstacle three, and obstacle four. Those are four obstacles. To find the average time it takes me to get through traffic, I will say average is equal to obstacle one plus 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 obstacle two plus obstacle three plus obstacle four um 
divided by four because it's max average average are, are the only things up and divided by the amount i have and then the output will be a v e average that'll be the second one nice next next one is number three get the area of a square given the length and the width well kind of weird to get the area of a square given the length and the width but that's okay right we know for sure that you're gonna get l and we're gonna get w that's the inputs do we know what l and w is no we do not know do we care what l and w is no we do not care all we are doing is we want to give the instructions to the computer that says no matter what happens if they give you a length and width then calculate it right so the area a a for area will be l multiplied by w and then the output will be a for area and those are the that's cool there for the um for the three questions and that's the finding diagrams so Next video, we'll be going on to um, let's call this thing representing algorithms. So we'll go through what is narrative, we'll go through what is pseudocode, we'll go through what is um, code, and we'll also go through what is flowcharts. And those will be the four things that we'll be basing everything on: narrative, pseudocode, um, flowcharts, and then the code code. But we're not really going to go through the code code, but basically that as well come down to and then trace tables and all that stuff so that's it for tonight